Okay, uh, we've made our 10 o'clock. I'm gonna run through the spiel so it's on the recording, but as you, uh, we'll, we'll get into saying hello again in a second. Um, so this is low code campfire for Friday, July 2nd, 2021. And uh, we are planning to go into Google Places again uh, today, plus wherever else you wanna go, but we have a little bit more of an elegant solution to uh, the, the one from last week. And so we'll uh, be doing that. Um, the local campfire is a place to, for the community to get together and gather, to share techniques, challenges, experiences. This is for everybody. So uh, bring something to show, be ready to help with ideas and suggestions. Uh, all past episodes have been recorded as is this one. And uh, so you're, you're welcome to um, subscribe on our YouTube channel. And there is a uh, QR code there if you'd like to do that. Um, we are uh, putting topical indexes into these. And uh, so the solutions and things we discussed are searchable and going back to it. And it's kind of interesting. I'm finding that the people are asking the questions. say, uh, I remember sometime back in Campfire or some back, time back in Loco Cafe, we discussed and being able to search our channel and find that stuff and jump right to the spot has been real helpful. So there's 50 hours of content in Loco Cafe and now we're up to, this will be our eighth hour of Loco Campfire. So uh, we run this pretty informally. Um, if, if you wanna say hi, I'll not put you on the spot. If you wanna say hi, we'll do that. And then we'll talk about techniques, challenges, experiences, and just explore the product a little bit. Um, but the main thing is jump in and participate. If you've got noise going on behind you, please mute. Uh, and I keep threatening to sing, but I, I'm really not going to. Um, if you have a question or topic that you want to submit in advance, I'll make sure it gets on, uh, onto our agenda for the day. And so there's the, the link to do that. And this stuff is also in the email that goes out uh, announcing this meeting. So hello, um, anybody want to say hi? I think we mostly have regulars today. Hello, Dale. Hello, everybody. This is Mark. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Dale. Good morning, everybody. Hey. So um, since, since everybody has participated before, we will jump right into campfire. Um, and the first thing is, if there's anything burning on your mind, I like to say I've got a continuation of last week's Google Places. I learned something new and I've got some stuff to share in that regard, but I'm happy to go where you guys want to go. So I have, I have a question on something I'm trying to do and, and just sort of stumbling with a little bit, which is, um, on the merging and overlays of PDFs. I, I have a PDF of a, a printed form that I need to put data in and, and I have not been able to figure how, if there's an easy way to do the alignment of that of fields into that form. Um, so I'm, I wouldn't say struggling, but I'm definitely stumbling so far. If there's any techniques people are using to do that kind of stuff. Okay, so you're, you have a, there's an existing PDF form and you're trying to hit the boxes? Yes. Okay, are you trying to recreate the form or just generate the output? Well, I, I was trying, I thought I would recreate the form from scratch, um, but I got thinking of the, the HTML layout might be more, you know, trouble than it's worth for that. And I was, I was reading about the overlays of documents and and I can get get the data on, you know, merge the two together to get data, but I don't know. I have not been able to do the alignment of them. Yep. So I haven't done a great uh, amount in this area. Um, I had a discussion with our uh, implementation team the famous Radu about how to do some of this stuff. And um, my recollection is one technique is that if you have a, uh, if you have a document like a Word document that ha 
as the layout. You can save that as HTML so that that can then be used as the uh, as the source for the PDF. So you let it. Uh, if, if what you're starting with is PDF document, that doesn't really get you there. But oftentimes you're starting with a, like a word that gets turned into a PDF and now you want to automate that. If you can go back to the word, save it as HTML, that gives you the HTML that you need. And I tried that, um, and this is more of a word problem in that the HTML I got out of Word did not maintain the formatting that it does for printing. It moved all okay. kinds of tables around. So, um, I, so beyond that, I, I don't have the answer. Have okay. you any experience in this area? Strangely, um, I might have that. <laughs> this is Don Gingold. Hey, everybody. Um, we have a project. It's, it's not a plan and app project, but it's, uh, it's similar. And in fact, I am trying to pitch uh, the clients to get uh, rid of an old OWS system. Um, but, but for that system, what we did was we, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have forms that we have to fill in. There's two different kinds of forms. One is a, uh, an application and the client um, types in the information on their computer, hits uh, print, and literally it does go to a printer. And in the printer is loaded a bunch of pre-printed forms. And uh, as it uh, spits out from the printer, there's all of their information that was collected on the screen in the spaces on the pre-printed form. They have a second bay, uh, second drawer in the printer. Um, and they click a different button and a certificate comes out with uh, certain pieces of the information uh, printed in the same space, but it's a nice printed multicolored thing. Um, and what we did was we used HTML and we basically are sending it to a print queue, uh, sending the uh, HTML to a print queue. Uh, and the way that we get it aligned is by uh, divs and absolute positions. So um, two different things. The first thing was that we just laid out a, what, what we thought the page should be. And we did it in uh, you know, converted picas to pixels, et cetera. Uh, and, um, and, and then each of the places where the words go is a div that has a, an absolute position um, uh, associated with it. Uh, and then uh, uh, there's an, uh, a container div uh, where it all starts from there. And then there is uh, in the container div, um, a CSS file. And that is where we can tweak the positioning of the printer so that if uh, they switch printers and now the alignment is off a little bit, we can, we can add a few pixels uh, left and top to move things. So that's how we did it. Well, that's good because that, that's sort of the road I'm heading down, but often I find that I go down a road and then find out, oh, there, boy, there's a dead end. And I like to avoid those if possible. Right. And, and we want to do exactly the same thing with, <clears throat> excuse me, with Plan and App. Uh, and uh, we, we told them, you know, why not just let us generate the PDF completely? Uh, and then we could just use the HTML to PDF or the, you know, the, output to PDF um, uh, plugin, uh, but they don't want that. They want to keep you know, their pre-printed pieces because they've got an arrangement with the printer, I guess, and they've got uh, you know, a, a room full of paper. So they're gonna keep that um, technique and we need to be able to just spit it out uh, to write on top of uh, 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 a pre-printed form. And in my case, it's a, I have a PDF of a, a, a fancy gift certificate laid out that I need to put in names and names and dates and values and things like that. So, but it'll all print to a plain paper printer when it when it's all combined together. So, so uh, first, Don, thanks for the suggestion. Uh, that's real helpful. And then uh, I'll just mention I've uh, been texting with Radu and oops, he's bopping in on us. Radu just arrived. So 
Um, maybe we can we can put him on the spot with this. Uh, Radu, uh, Jim Anthony has a question about trying to generate it, essentially trying to generate, I'm going to summarize it, generate the PDF. Uh, they want to generate the whole thing, but put the uh, data into the form and wants to hit the, to, to have nice alignment. Okay. So Radu, what, what I have is a PDF with a gift certificate, a blank gift certificate laid out. Okay. And I need to pull the data out of Planted App. And, and at least my technique that I was trying to get and I've had trouble with alignment is taking the original PDF form and then doing um, the merge and overlay with it to output um, to output a single PDF that I can send to the printer. I understand. Okay, uh, yeah, so the, the, my first thought to, was to recommend exactly what you are doing. And the problem with the overlay is that you are overlaying on a street, on a already generated PDF. And the other one, you have, I, I'm assuming that you're generating with HTML and generating like an overlay, uh, the overlay and put them to put them together one over another correctly. Right. Uh, okay, so another solution. So we, we struggled a little bit as well on this situation recently. And one solution that we came up was to find a way to, to transform the PDF in an HTML format. And after that, do some minor ad adjustments to the HTML code of the PDF of the layout and just put the tokens that we need to add directly into the directly into HTML format and do some minor adjustment like trimming out the margins and, you know, setting up the height wide of the of the PDF. Uh, from uh, by setting up parameters from the uh, uh, v, VK HTML to PDF add-on that we are using to generate this. So that can be another option. Is there a utility that I didn't know you could convert PDF to HTML? I, uh, I tried I... redesigning the form in Word to get HTML out, but then the HTML generated from Word is just not. I, I I know I know I know I know I know uh, I'm I'm not sure I think our colleague Patrick did this the last time uh, I'm not sure what utility he did work with uh, I can ask him what I, what 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 the recommendation it will be to try either a few of them online because each of them give you a different result some of them are better than others uh but uh i the, the the thing is that this is we had the same problem recently and that that was the the way how we uh, uh got through to deliver proper the same basically the same template one thing that you you will need to you might need to do is um you'll have to load a uh, font but you you load fonts into the uh, gen, uh, HTML generation exactly as you do as you do on any HTML page, and even other CSS you can load like that. Images can be loaded exactly like that. So it's basically the idea is that to to generate a, a HTML page, including with HTML tags, uh, body tags for JavaScript, if any. But in this situation, I don't think is the case. CSS is and everything to 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 generate the PDF. The overlay is getting complicated at some point when it's getting out uh, depending do, 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 does your certification have like names added or expiration date or something like yeah. that yeah name states name states values yeah. that can uh, uh, that can that can be an option the other thing what you, what you can do um, uh, another another oh I think oh well now that I think of I think I remember how Patrick did it and I think he actually converted the PDF to an image, set up a big uh, div element, and set up the background of that div element uh, to be the, the picture that is, is now the, a PDF. And after that, it had hard-coded text by setting up the position of the elements with position fixed and you know giving it uh, paddings uh, or margins with, uh, uh, from directly from CSS directly on the element. That can that can work as well. That's a good one. I, I hadn't thought about doing that. That might that that's another way to try. But I I could see how that might be a lot easier if, if it's just an image a background image on the HTML. 
and then the and then you have the HTML directly and can visualize exactly where the text is and stuff in, right. things like that to see to center it and to not have to generate a PDF each time just to see if everything is right. <laughs> it's uh, aligned correctly. Okay, I'll give that a try. Perfect. Roddy, thank, thank you, you for jumping in and giving us some suggestions, other ways to go about that. That's great. All right, I won't take up your evening, man. Thank you for doing that. No problem. Have a great day. So, um, yeah, it's great to be, I, I was always in, impressed when I was uh, part of Low Code Cafe and, and uh, Radu, I got to get me one of those because to be able to just uh, reach out and, and be able to pull from his experience is great. Um, before we get too far down the line, I wanted to ask you, um, or make you aware that this is going on and, and if at all possible, if it makes sense to you to do a Capterra review, we are um, working very hard to expand the use, of course, of plant and app. That's uh, part of what helps us. That's one of the ways we define success, right? And um, one of the way, things that we're doing with that is to um, get um, get honest reviews. We're not asking for, for sugar-coated whatever, but uh, honest reviews of the product that other people then can look at um, and uh, to be able to evaluate and, and make it um, appear the serious product that it is. So if you could, uh, the, the link for that is something that um, we include or and will include again in the emails to this, but it's, it's really kind of a big deal to us. So we appreciate it if you would take the time. Um, I looked at the form uh, this is the Capterra, and it's three pages. Now, I don't know what the, the additional pages are, but there's like who you are and, and two more pages. I don't think it's real uh, odious to be involved. So if you would uh, be inclined to do that, we would appreciate it. Um, anyone have anything else they want to go on to before I start talking about Google Places? Oh, yeah, I, I wanted to let you know that uh, we have a project, Dale, you know about it, but for the rest of you, uh, we have a government project where they're uh, doing property taxes and we used Plan and App, uh, mostly the, you know, Action Form and Action Grid and a couple of other pieces from it, uh, and not the workflow stuff, but uh, at least those things. And uh, the, the Plan and App team helped me build that system. And... Um, it's implemented, it's out there. Uh, I got a, a very nice uh, comment back from the key uh, person and the, the clients. Uh, and they said that uh, they, uh, the, the people that are administrating the system like it, that the people that are using the system, a few people have commented that, that they liked it. And uh, what they did was they created a special domain name, tertiary domain name. Uh, to get to just that spot of the website and we figured out how to make that all work and she said now that they're uh, they're um, uh, passing that thing out like candy so uh, that that's high praise from a government official so uh, thanks very much for that it's our first planning that project and we hope to have many more well that's great I know um, one of the first things when I came on board full-time with Plant and App was to talk to you about that project and then I handed it that, that uh, after we kind of got the specifications nailed down and, and that's part of the fun with the government entity right nailing down specifications but um, the, the implementation team uh, sounds like they pulled through on that one so yeah they certainly did Okay, I'm going to play some more then in uh, Google Places. We had some definite interest in, in that. Uh, so just to kind of where are we, where were we um, with this, we did a, uh, I, had, I had done one and then um, there was at the, as we were showing it off in uh, Low Code Campfire last week, Reza said, but wait, there's an easier way. And, and it is actually easier. And so I want to talk about that. Um, so uh, by quick over, uh, overview, Google Places is a field type that we have in our system. Uh, 
Let's see, make sure. Yeah, I'm logged in here. Okay, so Google Place is a field type for action form. You can type in an address and um, when you choose it, and in this case, I'm hitting parse address, um, the, the objective was that we wanted to fill in all these fields with values. The, so parse out the address into its components so that you can do things with it. And so um, this is as far as we'd gotten last time we hit the button, it fills in all the components. Um, and then what we see behind the scenes is that this field would normally not be displayed, but this is what gets returned from, um, from Google Places. So if we take a look at that and uh, beautify it so we can make sense of it, this is what they're returning. They're returning a bunch of address components and a lot of other things. Uh, I've turned this, uh, we, we were exploring a little bit at the end of last time, all the things that you can pay for and get back from Google. There's far more than this, but this is kind of the basic, almost free address mechanism that they give you. So. Um, Anyway, the technique that I showed, and you should look at the last one if you're interested in that one, was for 100% using the actions within um, within Plantin app to be able to parse this stuff out. And it's a little bit of a challenging structure that, that Google gives you because they give an array, an array here of all the different elements, and there could be any number of elements. There's really no order to them. And, and, and they identify what it is down in, in a secondary array that usually has just one entry, but can have two entries. And so we had to set up some iteration to go through those. So in, um, in, in Reza's demonstration, he was doing something different with some, uh, some Google, uh, excuse me, some, um, oh, he was parsing out um, financial information. And he showed the technique where uh, he pulled in the JSON that comes back from whatever his source is, and then builds back a JSON that's then easy to pull the information out of. So uh, he built an object, and then he got um, uh, out of the object, parsing down in the object, the quote response, the result, uh, the zeroth element post market price. So there's there's the using core JavaScript to to pull it out rather than the, uh, the content, uh, rather than trying to to loop through these actions. So uh, I today did the same, used the same technique. Um, it wasn't as simple as I had hoped it would be because. Um, that Google structure really requires that we build in some looping, not just address down to the zeroth element or the ninth element, but we, we don't know, we, we have to actually loop. So uh, that's the setup. Let's take a look at what we did, what it looks like. So in my form, we have this thing, now let's start with, hey, does it work? So I'm going to um, do, the same thing again. I just added additional buttons. And so uh, when we parse that, we still get the same result and we still, we're still getting Google Places result, but it's parsing it. This is using a workflow and grabbing it out of the JSON. And then I, I've got a third ver variation that uh, does virtually the same thing. It's still using the workflow, but it's um, it's not having to parse the JSON in a secondary way. So we'll, I'll show you both of these techniques. Very, very similar. One workflow does it all. And I'm going to share the, the result. If anybody needs it, it'll be out on, uh, you'll be able to import the form and better yet, the workflow that knows how to do all the work already. You can enhance it as you need to. So uh, let's take a look at that. Um, within my form, then I have two buttons. This is the original button, parse address. This is the one that's uh, using JSON. This is direct from the workflow. So let's, let's see what this looks like, because this is the simplest case, easy, easy to use. So um, in my actions for this, I have just two actions. 
one, I'm executing my workflow. And then the other is I'm updating the form Ajax, meaning it, it just keeps the form from refreshing. So everything happens in one step here. And so the input field is that I pass the JSON that comes back from Google to my workflow. And the output that I get back are um, the address JSON, which I'm not using in this scenario, but then I'm getting back the street number, the route, uh, the state, which Google calls administrative area number one, the country, which I'm, I'm not so what I'm doing is, for example, for street number, uh, I am just pushing whatever comes back from this workflow into my field street number, route, state, zip code, plus, zip code plus four. So these are my field names here, the field ID. So I'm just calling my workflow and putting the result back in. And so all the magic happens in the workflow, and I'm just grabbing the elements that I want. Um, so uh, let's take a look at what that workflow looks like. Uh, I think I've got that here. Yep. So I'm using namespaces. And uh, so it's called the campfire namespace. And this is the, the um, workflow called parse Google places result. So we'll look at that and take a look at it. So first of all, in development, what I did is I said, we have one input called the places JSON. And I actually took the result and put it as the default value, which just made it very easy to test. I can hit save and test it. I don't have to type in anything for um, places JSON because it's already in there. All my stuff is in there, so I can just test it. So that was just a testing technique. And we can see now that what I'm getting out of this is both JSON, which I'm ignoring in that first example that I'm showing you, but then all the different pieces are, are output as output parameters. So here's all the output parameters, the uh, address JSON, uh, and then all the different components. So let's see how we build these. And really, it's just done in, in two steps. It's, um, this is now the technique that Reza demonstrated. We doing, we're doing the execute JavaScript server, and we're doing, um, let's see, I have got some extra stuff. Uh, Um, so we are, the first step is it takes the places JSON that comes in on the input parameter and uh, creates a, a JavaScript object called gpjson, which we can then work with directly. The next thing, uh, the technique that we had to add in, this was the, the goofiness of this one, since we're walking through an array of the address components and we don't know I mean, there's a bunch of elements within there. We were looking at that here. There's a bunch of elements within the address components. We don't know which one is which. So we just have to walk through them all and see what they are. Um, so uh, I built a for loop. And again, I don't speak JavaScript. So I Googled this. I always go to W3 schools. They have a great JavaScript tutorial. So they had a great example of the code. Um, so we have a, this for statement that goes in processes every element in uh, GPJSON address components. And so each time, at, at each point, I pulled out two things, the name and the type. So the name is the short name, and the type is the zeroth element in types. So short name here, and then the zeroth element in types here. And then, as I had it, now this is this is going to be very re revealing of what I don't know about JavaScript. I'm actually there's probably a way to, to actually add these things to a JavaScript uh, to a JSON element within JavaScript. I just put, took the easy way for me and built a string array. So I'm saying I'm, I'm saying that uh, I'm putting a quote around the type, and then I'm putting a colon and quotes around the name. And so it's building up a string. And then at the very end, because I have a comma between each element, I added one uh, added curly braces on either side. And I added one more thing. This is processed by Google Places result. It's, it was either add one more thing that I could control and know that it, it was the last element and I didn't have a comma, or I'd have to go figure out how to remove that comma. So I was lazy and 
this in process by Google. First Google place result. And then I return that result. So this goes, that JSON, that result goes to address JSON. And address JSON is what we output in the address JSON parameter. So we output this thing, whatever. So whatever Google passes us, that's what we pass back. And so for our other technique we'll talk about in a minute, we, uh, we, can, uh, we can just parse that JSON. But the second, uh, to do all those other uh, tokens, what I did, we added an, a, uh, an action here that says, um, take the address JSON and turn it into, uh, parse it into tokens called address, the prefix address. So that gives us the ability to have address street number, address route, address country, address locality. So all these different things, we just pulled out the ones we wanted to, and that makes them real easy to consume on the other side. So that's the, that's the whole workflow. So first of all, before I go back, does the workflow make sense? Anybody have comments on, on that or my JavaScript coding abilities? Dale, what's the, go what's ahead. the equal syntax on your token name? I'm sorry, the, what is what? Oh, in your token name, it looks like you have an equal at the end of that, is that? Ah, yeah, so um, the idea is that tokens have the ability to be um, defaulted to a value and adding an equal sign. And I'm not, I'm not absolutely certain that I've got the syntax right. As a matter of fact, let's prove it here. Uh, we'll do. But it's the, um, it, the attempt was to have it be a default value. So let's save and test and see if I've got that right. See how test came, uh, yeah, see how test came back with nothing when I, when I did my, uh, when I outputted this. The, if I did not have that and this thing didn't exist, um, we would have the, I was, I was assuming I needed it to default it. That's the defaulting syntax. Apparently I don't need it to default it. So it was extra. Um, Don, did you have one? Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Yes. The second, the, the, the first step in the workflow made a lot of sense because I could follow that you've got some code, you're running through a loop. The second one, I wasn't sure what happened. Uh, is sure. there another hunk of JavaScript that walks through that string that you just did? What exactly is the second step doing? Sure, so, um, the, so the first step is outputting, the result of it is uh, a JSON object. And so address JSON, let me just cover that quickly. So address JSON, <laughs> we output that here in something called address JSON. So the result of the first step is this group of JSON. Yeah, got that. Okay, so then the second step is we take address JSON and turn it into tokens, meaning uh, you can address each element directly without having to use any kind of JSON syntax. You can pull things out. So we end up creating a token called address that has a lot of properties. And so this thing creates address and then here's where we're outputting them. So the street number is the address street number. We've pulled it out of that JSON and it's accessible as by name. So this, this is this will end up being my, my, my house number uh, and, and it returns it in the street number of variables. So, so is the second step a built-in uh, function that splits the string into pieces? Is that what that is? Absolutely, this is a built-in, um, uh, parse JSON into tokens is a built-in action. Oh, got it, got it, yep. okay. So it just takes JSON and builds it into something that you can, Builds it into a token. Got it. Okay, thanks. Yep, convert the JSON to a token. 
part of this is just knowing that you need to uh, to do these things, right? What the what the tools are. So uh, so this gives us all our parts and pieces. So now if we go back to uh, how I use this, this is I'm executing this workflow that I created, passing it Google Places. I really don't need this here. Uh, this this is for the other methodology. So now I'm just taking whatever that workflow tells me is the street number and putting it into my street number. The route goes to route, administrative area level one goes to state. I just do a, a matching and then update the form Ajax. And so that gives us this result. So that's the direct from workflow method. We're taking these values directly from workflow. So then let's take a look at the other method, uh, which is the parse from workflow JSON method. It's, it's very similar. It's just uh, done here, right? So in this case, all I'm taking back is the address JSON, the, the JSON element itself. Uh, and I'm ignoring all these other things that were there. Um, and then I'm doing the same steps here. This is I'm converting it to an address thing, to an address token. And then uh, put it, taking each one using the address token and putting it onto my form where I want it. So you might ask the question, well, why go through? And the answer is that if that um, the, the workflow that I defined pulls out the these you know, seven or eight things, predefined thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things. And if Google includes 10 things, you wouldn't be able to get to them through this until you modified your, your workflow. So this this kind of structure would say, well, if Google threw in anything extra, it would be retrievable out of here. And so you, either way is acceptable. It's probably easier. Uh, this, this, was a, this was the methodology that most matched what Reza did last week. And so I started there and then I said, well, but I really just want to pull out the, the uh, components and make it easy. So the, the, the workflow does all the work and then the, uh, when I, want to consume it in a form or in an automation or wherever I want to consume it, these things are all just pulled out for me, ready to go. So I like the last method best. So any, any other thoughts about Google Places? I will say that, let's see, I have, um, I have this in, Google Drive, I have a public area and I'll share this link with you in just a minute, but campfire number eight, this is the workflow that um, we were just looking at. So you could grab this workflow and import it into your project and you would be able to parse Google places, no problem. And uh, this is the actual form. So if you wanted to test it out and see how I did it, this has everything except it's using my Google places security key, which isn't going to work on your website. So you'd have to fix that. Um, anybody missed last week, uh, one of the setups within Google Places is you have to provide a Google API key. And this one will only work at Plant and App. And Dale, the link to that Google folder is where? Yep, let me, let me send that right now. And it'll be in the video for this uh, as well. But um, I'll put chat. Actually, I'm going to grab it. So here. Cool. So hopefully that's something somebody can reuse and uh, I'll continue, hopefully continue to build up these things that we do in Campfire, and I'll keep adding them to the same place. So, Dale, what are the uh, costs associated with Google Places? Uh, that's a good one, and luckily, all that is it's it's darn cheap, right? But um, there's the links within our Google Places uh, content opens. 
forms, uh, opens Google stuff that explains uh, a lot of that. And so we'll, uh, the basic data comes, um, you get the first 100,000 cost nothing. A actually, basic data uh, essentially, apparently is free, right? Um, if we, I think the next one is contact data, yep. So contact data starts to cost money. That's uh, in the first zero to 100,000, they cost three tenths of a penny for each request. So $3 a thousand. And let's see, the last one we're using, yeah, atmosphere data uh, is uh, $2.83 a thousand. So not, not prohibitive if you wanted to add that into your app, especially ones that do need. Uh, Dale, when you set that up, did you have to put in a billing? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. I think I had set up a credit card with my, okay. I did that so long ago, I don't remember, but I don't think they'll let you set one up without it because they don't know how you're gonna use it. Uh, but I never see it on my bill. So it's Google. If we, if we can't trust Google, uh, who are you gonna trust? So our uh, Google Places thing lets you pick which which fields you want to use. So I earlier last week we had these all turned on. I just turned them off, so we're not actually getting a charge for those. That's Great. good stuff, Dale. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. You know this um, this is just kind of the for me the the interesting thing between. Uh, what does the product do and what can you make it do? Um, so the product innately goes back and gets the Google Places data and makes it very easy to input an address. And we don't, from a product standpoint, we don't anticipate how you're, or tell you how you have to use that information. And uh, so the fact that you can extract it through JSON and it understands how to do JSON and you know, just while we're looking at it, these address components is, are where we are focused on because that was the source of the original question. But you know, I think it would be, uh, for example, you might as well grab and store away latitude and longitude if you're storing an address for somebody, because then you're you're good to go if you ever need that uh, at a later time. Um, the you know, what else is there? There, oh, you've got a link to a map, which I assume if we click this, it's going to show exactly. Uh, map. So there's a bunch of things that you can do with it, and that's uh, well, on a, one of my client apps. We use not through the planted app, but through that the Google Places data. We did get that Latin long, and use it for matching businesses at at a location to yep. duplicate businesses. That might have One of my, the address, yeah. the addresses will sometimes be a little bit off in the spelling or something. Mm -hmm. um, one of my clients has used this kind of information to map. So they have two different, they have people who provide services and people who need services. And so we have a, um, by, by having a latitude and longitude of all those people, you can then generate a, a Google map that has di different icons. Here's the people that need services, here's the people that provide. So you get a nice visual look at how, uh, who's close to uh, be able to provide the services. And so there's just a ton of stuff that you can do with that. Uh, it just takes, takes digging in. I use that for uh, pointing churches on a map and I'm using the uh, Google Places, uh, well, the Google Maps API uh, uh, on the same way. This is uh, getting all the data, uh, get the uh, longitude, latitude and point it on the map. Uh, it's very easy to do with the uh, uh, workflow in the, in the app builder to update after someone added the church, for instance. Yep. Great. Um, so we can all, we can return to that if anybody thinks of anything else, but uh, a couple of times back, we talked about handy tools. 
Uh, and these are a couple of my favorites. And if anybody wants to add anything to the list, uh, I'm going to add them here to the, the output. But um, I've been using Code Beautify today, which is I find very handy for if you have JSON to be able to drop JSON into uh, that you know comes back in an unstructured way, and you get to see it in a structured way. Um, very handy to me. And then um, one, the, the other one that I, I mean, somebody else had a, had a favorite HTML editor and I've used this one as well. This one happens to be my favorite, but it has the ability to, uh, you, you've got HTML so you can design on one side or even go full screen with your design and then your HTML pops out on the other side. And uh, there's some formatting. You can have it be very strongly formatted, or you can minify it if you want to just plop it into something. Uh, if you don't need all that uh, structure, you can store it away into a into a database column in a, in a minified kind of way. But um, yeah, just so those are a couple of my favorites. Has that's cool. Thanks, Dale. Use either of those or have others that you're, are your favorites. Hmm. Sorry, we like I said, we had just kind of talked about it. Um, so now we're on to uh, Open Line Friday. If anybody knows that reference, um, what do you got going on? What else can we do this day? or things that we can tackle on another lunch. Uh, a lot of you follow along in the community forum and, and, uh, and actually answer in the community forum. I sure appreciate that. Um, it helps we can help other people along when we already know an answer. That's great. And uh, we, try, we try and answer them, but we, oftentimes you guys get to them before I do or have better answers than me. Um, we, had, um, we have this older area, um, a lot of videos made, um, the 1001 uh, blog, if I can find it. Um, and people uh, still find this content. And there's a lot of good content that's out there. Some of it's dated, and it's all before Plants and App. Um, but uh, we had a um, user interested in uh, building a store, and there's kind of an eight-minute video of um, uh, that the support team did a few years back on how to build a um, product product and a shopping cart, um, which is kind of interesting. It's a it's good technique and it's all good information. The, uh, the unfortunate thing is that um, the details are always, the devil is in the details, right? It's one thing to be able to come up with a shopping cart, but then uh, what's next? The, uh, now that we have a cart and you want to do ordering, um, how far do you want to go to, to build a store? Do you want to, yes, we're going to collect some money. That's, that's the next step, but then you need to be able to have an order entry screen, excuse me, an order view, what, what orders have been placed at the store and what are their line items. So now you have this whole uh, additional kind of content um, orders and line items and who they go to. Um, and then, you, then, then there's store management. How do we uh, add items to the product table, for example? So being able to add, create your add and edit and delete. And so I, I guess I'm just, just commenting that it's one thing to see in an eight minute video, you can build a shopping cart, but the reality is as you add on all those other features, there, there's a lot of details, right, to make it look right and to make it work right to do all the other things. And, you know, that's the, the, the um, 
I mean, I, I assume that you run into that same thing in, in your projects. There's things that you can get some of the core functionality really quickly, but the down now we're back to our original discussion about PDFs. There's a whole level of detail. How do you, you know, now you might end up being down to the pixel and moving things around to make things get a form. There's, you know, there's, it, it isn't just waving a wand. There still is a role for, for coding and developing. Those videos were actually the starting point for my, my PDF overlay. You know, I watched those to sort of, okay, what's the concept behind this? Excuse me, excuse me. I haven't, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, uh, I've been using those quite a bit too, Dale. I, uh, and one of them was the, uh, I think a video you put together where you filter uh, a grid, you hit the action form and there was a, you know, it went really well. But then once I started adding additional parameters, I was running into issues with trying to put together the where clause for the SQL statement. And I think uh, Ben and Jim, who's here now, they, they kind of re, you know, helped me, gave me some suggestions on how to address that. And that's like you, what you're saying, those are like the, the little final details where you're trying to, to get over that, you know, the hump and trying to finish the kind of finish the product. And, but the videos kind of get you to that point, but it's just those little minor things that kind of come up where you're trying to figure out the, how to, you know, address those, uh, small details become major if you don't know the answer, so. Yep. Yeah, well, I've uh, used this a lot too, Dave. Yeah, and so then, uh, you know, it's great that you have other people to draw on when those, when those things come up. Uh, and, and, and Albert, on that SQL question that Ben replied to, I just did a test, and he's right that with adding his little, uh, technique of the extra ands and ors my at least with 200,000 records in the database it made about a seven second difference in the in the response by the, the combining the two the two methods okay that's a good I, I came across something like that uh on a another site that mentioned the method you use yeah they did a test uh, either way so that's good to know thank you i appreciate that Now, on the topic of uh, finding help or looking things up, um, just just a general question. I, I'll tell you what I am doing, and I'm looking for a recommendation from from somebody else. But you know, when I want to find out something that uh, a, a detail about um, something that an app or action form or one of the other modules can do, I'll typically type in something related to that into the browser uh, uh, URL bar. And then I'll add on site colon dnnsharp.com. Um, and I'll, I'll oftentimes get, you know, I'll get documentation or I'll get a, a help ticket uh, or a combination of, of those. And that's all great. But, but now that there's the Play at the Nap website, um, kind of have to, to do that twice now to get the data either DNN Sharp or on the Play at the Nap website. And I was just wondering, uh, what are you guys doing to find help on specific topics when you're looking it up? <laughs> you know, a thousand times a day like I am. Yeah, I, I usually do what you're doing, Mark. I, I'll go to actually the help um, on DNA and Sharp and I'll search within there, their support to look for things. And then if I don't find it and I go to the browser and I'll do a search, you know, just like you're doing to over the Planet App camp, uh, uh, community one. Uh, but I wish there was a way to kind of combine those or some repository that pulled them all together and we could just search in one location. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of great information on both, both areas, but it's just, you know, the time is a little time consuming when you got to go to one or the other and then, and even filtering because some of this stuff is kind of old um, and you can't really filter by more, more recent uh, tickets that have been, you know, have may focus on the area that you're trying to look for. So Right, right. Yeah, same, doing the same thing. Um, there was, uh, so I, I'm, I hear the, first of all, I hear the uh, concern and the, the, 
part where this is all over the place. Uh, you have lots of channels and that makes it hard to search. Uh, I'll bring up a couple of things that, um, you know, I think, okay, so I'm not sure what the view is that, that you have. Uh, so uh, hopefully I'm not showing you things. I'll, I'll just say, I'll say definitely things that are definitely there. Uh, I realized recently that um, within our help center, um, that when it tries, when it asks, what can we help you with? Um, that this actually triggers a uh, speed search, a search boost search. So this is a fast way to go over lots of lots of topics within the, uh, the help center. And so this is search boost results. And uh, so when we say we think we have the answer you're looking for, that's that's um, search boost. And that's one way to kind of drill down into all the old historical tickets and things that people have asked questions about before. Um, the part that I wasn't sure of is whether you have uh, this all, all tickets choice within your um, within your menu as a as a non employee, but this uh, this search is says I'm okay. There's ten thousand tickets and lots and lots of text. So searching through this, filtering it for product, searching through it is uh, it it works. It's slower. So knowing that that speed search is there also. Okay. Useful. Um. And then you know as we add this content on our YouTube channel. Um, let's see if I can find the, um, no, I, I'm, I'm going to show this on, on Wednesday It's probably in my, in my next low code, uh, cafe, but uh, how to, since we're now doing a great job at indexing all the content that goes into a, a uh, these videos, trying to be able to access that through description, I had to go look that up yesterday. And, and they, essentially, you go to the find our channel, and well, that, that's the way to do it. So you go to the channel, and then there's a search within that, and that sticks within the channel. So uh, And then so you can get down into things, the episodes that mentions grid or uh, within or how, whatever it is that you're looking for. I think somebody was looking for like RSA. That's cool, Don. I haven't tried that before. So, you know, we mentioned RSA encryption in 42 and 43. And, you know, it's here in our breakout. And so now, you know, you can click directly in there and, and grab that, go right to the part of the video. So if we, if you remember that we've said it, that's a, a this is a way to go search for it. Look, go to the channel and search for it. And since it's our channel, it, it'll go across uh, Campfire and Loco Cafe and many of the other, other videos we're publishing. Yeah. Good tip. Okay, so um, you probably saw, but Low Code Cafe is closed. You're going to have to get your, your uh, fix of cafe somewhere else next week. But the did I just advise you to go to some other product? I don't think so. <laughs> but um, back back in a week, we're going to take the week off. Uh, but this event is still on for next Friday, uh, unless you all tell me that your extended celebration of the 4th of July covers into next Friday. Um, but, uh, oh, we'll be here. And if there's any topics that come up, we'd be happy to cover it. Thanks for participating today and your good questions. You guys have a day. Happy 4th. Good session, Dale. Thanks so, so much. Yeah, thanks, Absolutely. Dale. Absolutely. We'll thanks, Dale. Time. Absolutely. Have a good weekend, everybody. Yeah, happy 4th, everyone.